Hi, I'm making a procedurally generated adventure game where you play as a demon-killing mercenary. But for now, you're just a blushing ghost. So, before I begin, it's probably best I introduce myself, since this is, after all, my very first devlog. I'm a senior in college studying IT. With these videos, I wanted to challenge myself and get out of my comfort zone. I've never been comfortable presenting my work, and I've always wanted to create content. When I started working on this game, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to do both of these things. One important point I should mention is that this is my first time building a game. And although I've done a little programming in the past, I've never made a game before. So, I think that a big portion of these videos will be mostly to document my learning experience and my approach to a big project. At this point, a lot of the game is undecided, and I'm coming up with new ideas as I build. The main game mechanics that I want to have are procedural generation of the storyline and the maps, as well as turn-based combat. I am taking a lot of inspiration from Dwarf Fortress and For the King, so if you like those games, you might be interested in following along. And although I do not see myself making this game as complex as either of those, their individual qualities and mechanics are something I would love to reflect in my own little game. The only technology I'll be using is Pygame, NeoVim, and Aceprite. My reasoning behind this is simply because I'm not familiar enough with any other languages. And I feel like Unity and other game engines are way too powerful for what I wanted to accomplish with this game. I'm also far too lazy to learn a whole new program and I just wanted to get started. Anyways, enough rambling, let me show you what I've done so far and what I want to accomplish in this video. Currently, there are two systems. One for generating the events that the player will interact with and the map generation itself. The world generation uses Perl and noise technique to create the terrain for each level. It works by randomly creating a noise map, normalizing it into three values, and then using this normalized map to render the in-game terrain. At this point, I've been able to consistently generate maps and then render them on the screen with custom assets I've created. So far, I've categorized in-game events into three categories. Chance, which is a dice roll where the outcome depends on your player stats. Encounter, which is when you encounter a non-combat entity that you can interact with in a meaningful way. And finally, combat, which is a turn-based combat event. All I've done is written code for this, and it's not implemented in any shape or form into the actual game. I'll be working on this in the next video. Other functionality that I've worked on is the player movement and the camera tracking. As you move around the map, the camera follows the player around. So far, this has been the most difficult thing to implement. Finally, this is still in the very early stage and mostly here for testing purposes, but an event entity is rendered on the screen and you can interact with it. So with this out of the way, in the rest of the video, I will just be working on refactoring everything I've written so far because it's awful and unorganized. My approach to organizing and restructuring my code is to pinpoint areas where I repeat the same code and then rewrite it into functions that accomplish the same tasks. I try to think of scalability every time I review my code. For example, currently I load, scale, and render every single asset individually on a separate line. This is terrible because it's not scalable. It can work when I have 5 assets or so, but what happens if I have 100? To clean this up, I've done a couple of things. First, I created a hash table to link each asset to a specific name. Now, any time that I need an asset, I just key the needed name from the asset store dictionary. Next, instead of creating a unique surface for each asset group that is rendered on the map, I am simply going to be rendering everything on a single surface. Next, I worked on fixing the redundant scaling that I was applying to some assets. Now, each time the asset is loaded, it is scaled by the same scale factor, making my code a lot cleaner. Next up, I've cleaned up the entity and player creation and rendering code. Now, instead of instantiating the player object and then separately loading the player asset and scaling it and finally rendering it on the map, it's all done inside of the player class. So all I have to do is instantiate the player with the asset as the parameter. And since the player is a subclass of the entity class, this works for all of the entities inside of the game, not just the player. Finally, I began working on adding a new method to my camera class that will update the location of each entity on the map based on the location of the viewport. Since the viewport represents a zoomed in portion of the map, I need each entity to maintain their original X and Y coordinates, while at the same time updating them inside of the viewport. This was a little tricky to figure out. 
The top left corner of the map has the X and Y coordinates of 0, 0. But what the player sees rendered on the game window is not a full map. It is just a zoomed in portion of it. Here, no matter the location of the player, the top left corner of the actual game window will always be 0, 0. What I needed to create was a method to offset every entity based on a player's position within the map. I added an X and Y attribute to each entity object, which represents the entity's original position, as well as the viewport X and Y coordinate, which are used to render them on the screen. Next, I added a method to the camera class that would offset these viewport X and Y coordinates based on the player's location inside of the map. Here, I used two orange trees to represent example entities. I've added both of them to a global entity array which would house all the entities on the map. When I run the game, both of their locations now update as the player moves around the game. Now I think is a good point to end the first video. I'm still learning how to plan and record my development process, so if you have any feedback or questions, leave a comment below, I would love to read them. The schedule for next week is to finish implementing the event creation system into the current state of the game as well as making the player actually interact with entities and events that are on the map. I've already started working on this, and I'm in the process of putting together the second video right now. So, if you're interested in seeing what's next, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.